Hello and welcome to Connected. Tonight, we explore the depths of the ocean and take a trip to the moon with local children's book illustrator and author, Anne-Marie Finn. Hinksy checks out a new hub of innovation and ideas as Ipswich City Council fires up the passions of tomorrow's entrepreneurs. We discover an Aussie foundation committed to helping earthquake ravage Nepal and musically, Adam Spain Mostina from the 2015 season of The Voice. It's time to keep it local and get connected connected. As adults, we look back on our childhood and are amazed at the adventures we seem to get ourselves into. From scaling the depths of the ocean in search of treasure or flying to the moon in a spaceship, we all seem to achieve much more before we're five than when we do in our entire lives. Now, this is largely due to the wondrous talent of children's book authors, whose job it is to set our imagination alight. Joining us now is one such person, local children's book author and illustrator, Anne-Marie Finn. Welcome to the program. Hi. Uh, you have done some amazing uh, work in, in creating these wonderful characters for children over how long? Uh, uh, it's been about 15 years now I've been illustrating. And how did you first get into illustration? I've been drawing since I can remember and as I was at school I was thinking about what, what I would do as a career and the only thing I could think of was I was going to be some kind of artist or illustrator. Right. So I went to study illustration at college and and um, that's where you went from there really. And of course the illustration has actually led you into also writing books too. Yeah, uh, when I was at college I was given a, a brief to uh, write and illustrate a children's book and it took me 15 years before I actually got around to doing that. I, I worked in illustration in between designing greetings cards but um, Oh right, okay. Yeah, and stationery and it just turned out that it was when I'd had my own kids, really, that yeah. that's when I decided this is the time to do it. To do it. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, some of your stories are, are great fun for kids, uh, including a, a trip to the moon. Yeah, that was my first. Your first. Is it like uh, the, the very special one for you? It is. That's actually the story I wrote in college. And when I had my, my eldest son, Liam, that's when I decided to go back, rewrite the story so it's actually about Liam. Oh, nice. So yeah. it's, it's real life experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and what about Captain Kieran? Well, I've got two children, Liam and Kieran, so it wasn't fair to do a book for one and not the other. So. You would have created World War Three in the house if you exactly, didn't write yeah. one with Kieran, wouldn't <laughs> he you? He wouldn't be speaking to me now if he didn't have a book. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what about uh, Gus the Asparagus, uh, who is sitting nicely next to you, uh, a character from one of your books? Books, uh, yeah. but it came about because of a very special reason. Yeah, uh, I had both of my kids diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is um, basically autism spectrum disorder. And I must have been thinking about this one day as I, I woke up one morning and opened the fridge and there was a bunch of asparagus. And I just made the connection, asparagus, asperger's. And of course, yeah. the idea came to me instantly that this character was going to be um, and a giant asparagus who yeah. had all the similar experiences to somebody with Asperger's syndrome. What amazes me when looking at the books though uh, is how vivid the colours are too to really capture yeah. kids' attention. Yeah, um, when I write a story, when I illustrate a story, I kind of get a feel for how it's going to look before I start it and I knew that Gus had to be bright and very simple and very fun and engaging. Yeah, and, and of course all of the other members of the Green family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you, you, the mother is what? She's a broccoli, Brenda, oh, right. yeah. Okay, and Dad? <laughs> Dad's a zucchini. Uh-huh, uh, and, uh, and what about uh, any other characters that you regularly feature? Uh, this, he's got a little brother, Charlie, who's yeah. a chili, who's going to be the subject of the next book. Oh, okay, so that's, you're already working on one already? Yeah, it's half written. Wow. Yeah, Chill Out Charlie, the next <laughs> book is called. <laughs> How long does it take you to actually write and illustrate a book? Uh, well, the first book obviously took me 15 years. Yeah. Um, after that, it's not, it probably took me about a month to write Captain Kieran. Right. And maybe a little bit less for Gus. The, the concept was already there, basically. Yeah. Now, this is, uh, I've got a picture here that you actually finished last night. Yeah. Which is actually a picture of uh, the latest characters. Yeah. This is a book called Eric Finds His Way by Robert Vessio. Yeah. Um, it's one that I'm actually publishing myself. Great. And this is the first completed illustration from that book. 
and uh, while we're looking at that picture, uh, you, you've also got uh, uh, your own publishing house, which you just mentioned, uh, Dragon right, yeah. Tales. Dragon Tales Publishing, yeah. So uh, you're not just putting your works through there, but also other people's. Exactly, yeah. I started off with just my own, but I decided that um, there's so many local authors and illustrators, especially locally, uh, looking to get the work out there. So I thought, why not help? everybody yeah. else as well. It's great when you can tap into children's imaginations, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. They're so easy to um, get excited about things. Yeah, yeah, and very naive, but they really, you know, in that naivety, sap up the whole thing as exactly, a believable yeah. story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. My, my son Liam, um, when he first read his book, he actually thought that he had been to the moon and in the <laughs> rocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, uh, one of the other books that uh, people can look out for now is yeah. this one, which uh, is the next book in the uh, Dragon Tail story. Yeah, this is Maxidents Happen. It's actually the first book of a short series by Michelle Deverell. Um, it's aimed at probably eight plus as a chapter book and it's a, a character that gets into lots of mischief and mayhem and it's, it's funny. Fantastic yeah. and of course if people want to uh, find out more too they can even visit you at your shop. That's right, the Mad Hatter's Bookshop in Manly. Uh, where I stock all of these lovely books, of course. And just celebrated your first anniversary as yes, well. Yes, yes, very exciting. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> once you crack that first 12 months, it's all clear sailing from then. Exactly, yeah. yeah and we'll Gus has got his own little home there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so people can come in and meet Gus. They can, yeah. What more could you want? <laughs> Look, thank you so much for joining us on the program, Emery, and all the very best for the, uh, the future of Dragon Tales and also Gus the Asparagus. Great, thanks, Damien. And uh, if you would like to purchase some of Anne Marie's books, uh, just head to dragontalespublishing.com.au. Coming up on uh, an Aussie organisation helping the victims of the Nepal earthquake, the voices Adam Spain Mustina sings up a storm in our studio, and Hinksy meets the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. That's next on Connected. And welcome back to Connected. Well, technology is certainly changing the way we live, work and play. The city of Ipswich is investing in this digitally enabled future by creating a hub for tomorrow's movers and shakers. We sent Hinksy out to see if he could add his own innovation and ideas to Fire Station 101. Hi, it's Hinksy. Today I've come down to Firehouse 101 in Ipswich and I thought, well, it's going to be an exciting day. We're going to have fire poles and ride, riding fire trucks. But no, it's even more exciting than that. So, Chad, Fire Station 101, what's it about? Because this is such a unique space. Hmm. So, Fire Station 101 is uh, it's an innovation hub uh, where uh, entrepreneurs can come. Anyone with a bit of a bright idea can come and build and grow and develop that idea. Uh, to not just impact the local area, but also how we, how we scale that in a global way. This is also something that's unique to Ipswich and uh, Australia, really, because it's owned by the Ipswich City Council. That's right. It's one of the few, if not the only, uh, innovation hub in Australia, uh, which is fully owned, supported, and managed by a, a local council. Uh, and they've done that. Ipswich City Council has said to, to, to really invest in innovation and drive the, the digital economy across Ipswich. What sort of stuff can you do when you come in here? Yeah, so when an entrepreneur comes in, it's, it's both for people that want to do a startup, as well as existing businesses who want to uh, innovate and, and dis disrupt their own industry, as well as large corporations that say, we want to try and spin up a bit of innovation. They come in here uh, and they, they work on their project, they work on their business, and, and to do that, we support them through getting the, the, the members involved, the other members can collaborate, the, the mentors around them, the investors, the, the partners that we have access to, such as Accenture and Cisco and, and Oracle, Microsoft, uh, Amazon Web Services, Services, and also some volunteers and interns, and we focus all of those on the entrepreneur's success. So what sort of businesses are we looking at that are coming in to uh, use this space? Uh, it's a range. Uh, we, we have three uh, main focus areas that are emerging, and one of them is virtual reality, uh, because it's going to be a, a huge industry. It's ready to be about a, a $1 billion industry just this year alone, wow. and between 10 to $30 billion by uh, uh, 2020. So virtual reality is going to be big, and so we're really investing in that. Um, smart digital city, which is driven a lot by council, which includes Internet of Things, big data, open data, and um, uh, social impact, social enterprise. And that's really a focus for us because you can't um, create all this wealth and all these new projects and leave entire segments of the community behind. So how do we, how do we invest across the spectrum? And we really are getting such a range of businesses, everything from 
from a, a windscreen repair company that wants to innovate and disrupt his business and scale them across the nation to uh, somebody who's creating um, robotics kits for young people in school wow. um, to applications for uh, parents to find activities for, for, their, for their kids, mentoring applications, um, just such a diverse range, um, which is really pure community development. We want all aspects of the community to be able to engage with innovation. And the interesting thing about this space, it used to be the garage for the fire trucks yeah, yeah. In, in Ipswich and Limestone Street. So how did you come about finding this space? Well, council um, uh, purchased the, the space last year. Um, but one of the interesting things is that from, from the decision to purchase the space to opening was about nine months or so. So they really acted fast. Um, sometimes I get some fireys coming in here. Uh, I love talking to them because I, I walk them through here and I, I do give them a bit of a tour and I say, yeah, that's the bunk room or that's the, uh, that's the place where people work. And they say, no, 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 mate, that, that, that's the old bunk room. <laughs> and I say, oh, well, that's, that's kind of where we do our virtual reality. No, 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 no. Uh, that's where we used to eat our meals and those little 13-inch TV up there we used to watch. And I say, well, that's our outdoor area. They said, actually, no, see that chip on the pillar? That's where our mate backs the fire truck up into the, in, into the, in, into the concrete there. If you want to be a member, yeah. how do you do that? Yeah, so give me a call. Uh, it's a brief conversation. Uh, we are for people that have an idea. So this isn't necessarily where you can come and just say, run your business. So if you're like say an accountant or a lawyer, you want to come in and, and just have a, a place to work, look, there's spaces out there for it. But if you want to disrupt that industry, so we have lawyers who are disrupting their own industry, yeah. great, come in and you can help uh, develop and build that project. Well, good luck with the space. It looks like a, a fantastic technological breakthrough for Ipswich and uh, we look forward to seeing where it leads. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Certainly an amazing place. There are a range of opportunities for volunteers and interns at Fire Station 101. So if you are interested, head to their website, firestation101.com.au. We'll take a break and come back with a lot more Connected right after this. And welcome back to Connected. In 2015, Nepal was hit by one of the largest earthquakes in recorded history, leaving its people to pick up the pieces of their homes, schools and businesses. Well, one year on, the Australian Himalayan Foundation is working hard to continue rebuilding the lives of those affected. And joining me now is Krista Waddell, a representative of the Foundation. Welcome, Krista. How are you? Okay. Uh, very good. It must have been a huge undertaking to get in there and help those affected by this earthquake. It was definitely a massive undertaking by the AHF. Um, luckily, they had been on the ground working with teacher training programs and a number of other programs in the area. Um, so they had a grasp of the need yep. and local NGOs to help them throughout the process. So uh, with the, the work that you were in there doing before the earthquake hit, I mean, you, you obviously run a number of programs. Mm -hmm. There were teacher training programs, um, scholarship programs and other education programs in the area already with the local NGOs. Right, so mainly working with uh, with youth of that region? Primarily, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Now, as someone told me about the Renew program. How does that fit into the scope of things? Um, the Renew program is also assisted by the Australian Himalayan Foundation. The acronym is for Respect, Educate, Nurture and Empower Women, and that's run on the Bhutanese side of the Himalayas. Right, so you've got different zones where you, you're doing different work. Exactly. Uh, and, and how long has the Renew program been going? Um, not sure exactly how long the Renew program's been established. It was um, originally started by Her Majesty the Queen Mother of Bhutan after trekking through the, the region and the outlying areas and realizing that there were children in extreme poverty. Uh, the Renew program brings the um, girls from those villages into the education system to try to balance the the number of girls to boys. Right, so that was a, the obvious need that uh, they needed to have this program going. Mm -hmm. Well, if they have uh, a child and have enough money to send a child to school, it's primarily the boys. Right. Um, schools are often three to four days walk away from the village, which means that they have to have a um, boarding environment 
to wow. get an education. Imagine Australian kids having to trek three or four days to go to school. Exactly, and imagine it only costing $200 a year. Wow, is that, is that all it costs <laughs> to, to school? Costs, yes. That is amazing. Uh, so obviously, you know, uh, lots of the fundraising programs that you guys undertake goes towards helping uh, pay those $200 tuition fees per year. Yes, and some of the, the fundraising goes towards that. And then we also have a rebuilding program now in Nepal um, to rebuild some of the 300 schools that were affected by the earthquake. Wow, so and as you said, a lot of those uh, schools are still being affected. Uh, some are still leveled to the ground, aren't they? Exactly. A um, number of those schools are being rebuilt by some of the NGOs that we work with on the ground. One of the great programs that they're doing in that region is um, using the the rebuilding of the schools as a trade skills learning environment. So children will come in and learn a trade working on the schools and then they'll be hired to help build the next school. Right. So it's creating a program even though they don't have the schools at the moment, they're able to generate an income. Right. You've been to Nepal how many times? I've been to Bhutan um, five times. Right, okay. So it must have been really uh, something very personal for you as well when you heard about this earthquake. Very much so. And yeah. um, the director of the AHF had actually just arrived back in Australia from her trip to Nepal just days after the earthquake. Wow, it's, you think it's that close, wasn't it, yeah. you know? Uh, now you were also hosting a, a series of, uh, of uh, treks through the area as well to help raise funds. One of those was the, the Summit tra Club Trek. The Summit Club Trek runs um, with Kathmandu. Yep. And it's a trek that goes through Nepal. And I think there were 10 people along with some guides last year who were able to go and raise funds for the area and enjoy the Himalayas themselves. So what you actually do is take people that want to contribute some dollars to the to the cause, but also they can go and experience uh, the region for themselves. Exactly, and they don't necessarily have to contribute them from their own pocket. Um, we try to get uh, all of our guests involved with different fundraising activities. We host luncheons, movie nights, people have car boot sales. <laughs> you know, they try to get their own community involved and then bring those funds over to the... And uh, is the um, uh, AH, AHF uh, Australia-wide or just uh, centralised to Queensland? It is Australia-wide. They're um, based in New South Wales, in mm -hmm. Sydney. Um, my friend Heather and I are active in the Queensland area for fundraising and different events. So people can certainly uh, support uh, even sitting home here in Australia. Exactly. All right. Well, <laughs> it's it's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. So such great work you're doing, and all the best to uh, you and the team trying to help these people in uh, in Nepal get back on their feet. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you would like to find out more about the Australian Himalayan Foundation or would like to make a donation, just head to their website, Australian Himalayan Foundation. Dot org dot au. Well, our musical guest this week is no stranger to Australian fans of The Voice. Last year, Adam Spain Mostina turned the chairs of judges Ricky Martin and Delta Goodrum. He joined Team Ricky alongside previous Connected performer Tim McCallum. Adam joins us now here on Connected. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Good. What made you uh, go for the uh, the audition process? Um, my mum pretty much, because it was at, towards the end of grade 12, my mum pretty much said, you know, um, try out for everything, try out for the university, the voice, and then, so I, I did get accepted into both, but I chose the voice. Yeah. And then, yeah, no, it was a really cool experience. And I'm glad I did it, yeah. It, it's one of those things that really, you have to, to have that sort of courage to get up there initially oh, yeah. the, behind that microphone, don't you? Definitely, like, yeah, the nerves, the nerves really do hit you before, but then once you start singing, you're just into it, you know, and you just feel the music and... Mm. Would you do it again? Uh, no, I wouldn't <laughs> go back to it again. Um, I don't know, I've had my time to shine, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, no, it was a good experience, but yeah. All right, so what's uh, Adam Spain Mustina been up to since The Voice? Um, gigging here and there, you know, doing a few weddings, um, gigging, you know, just around the place. And also um, next year I'll be, hopefully, or. Um, I will hopefully be accepted into NIDA, right? National Institute of Dramatic Arts. So a bit of an actor. Yeah, musical theatre. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. So, so any particular musical that you might love to do? 
hard question. I yeah. know there's so many out there. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just whatever comes up, really, I'm happy to do it. So yeah, but eight shows a week, it's a hard call, mm. isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Have you done musical theatre before? Yeah, I have through high school. So what was the uh, the big starring roles you had in high school? Um, I I was Riff in uh, West Side Story. Yes, yeah. And um, I was also Brett in. Um, 13 musical. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, a very old classic and then a, a contemporary musical yep, as well. That's it. And do you have a leading in that regard? Do you like the old classics over the uh, the contemporaries or? I like everything. Good everything. answer. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> well, of course, uh, people can find out all about you on Facebook yep. uh, and find out where you're gigging next and all that sort of thing. Yep. But as a special treat, you're going to do a bit of a uh, performance for us yep. here as well. So what's the song you're singing? Uh, Nobody Love by Tori Kelly. Fantastic, mate. Well, we'll leave you here. And of course, for our entertainment pleasure, here he is, Adam Spain Mustina. Everybody's looking for that something. No one ever wants to pay the price huh? Everybody's scared of going nowhere But we ain't going anywhere tonight oh, And I should be more cynical and tell myself it's not okay To feel this good when I'm with you Try my best to fight it, say I hate you but I love like you do ain't nobody love ain't nobody love like you oh, 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 do ain't nobody love ain't nobody love like you do ain't nobody love ain't nobody love like everybody's talking about the next thing yeah i feel like when they got ain't good enough oh, oh, yeah. but all i want to do is release attention Bring the conversation back to us oh, And I should be more cynical And tell myself it's not okay To feel this good when I'm with you Try my best to fight it Say I hate you but I always stay Oh, 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 oh Cause ain't nobody love Ain't nobody love like you do Ain't nobody love, ain't nobody love like you oh, 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 do Ain't nobody love, ain't nobody love like you do Ain't nobody love, ain't nobody love like you oh, 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 do Can we stop right here now, baby? I am here, I want you here now Try my best to fight and say I hate you, but I always stay Adam Spain, Mostina, and Nobody's Love, and that just about wraps up the program for us today. Make sure you also check out our website. It has the latest episodes, uh, some extended clips, and also guest information. The website, connectedtv.com.au. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next week from the entire team. Bye for now.